Shalom, shalom the kalam. We are back to discuss another letter of the Aleph Bet. Remember, we are uh, looking at the letters that are used beyond just being consonants within words, but they have specific meanings. So today we're going to look at the Aleph. And first we will take a, a brief moment to just see how to write the script, the handwriting Aleph. The Aleph is completed in two parts. There's a small half circle which sits on the line, and then a larger line which comes down next to it. One, two. That's the Aleph, two-parter. The Aleph just has one use in Hebrew as a grammatical particle, and it makes the first person singular imperfect. It's a prefix that means I will do something. Breshit bet pasuk shmon esrei, Genesis two eighteen. Vayomer Yehovah Elohim lo tov heyot adam levado eesel lo ezer kenegdo. Breshit vav pasuk sheva, Genesis six seven. Vayomer Yehovah imcha et adam asher barati me al pneha adama me adam ad behema. Adremes viad of Shamayim ki nachemti ki asitim. In the first verse here, we see that uh, Adam has been created, and the father says, "Oh wait, he needs he needs a helper to go with him." And so we see the verb es, the olive added on to the uh, root ayin sin hey, which means to make or do, and he says. Lo Ezer Kenegdo. I will make him a helper that will be across from him, his mirror image, um, something like that. In the second verse, uh, referring to Noah's time, we see that uh, the uh, father repented of having uh, created everything on the earth and he's going to wipe it all out. And so we see this verb, Emche. The Aleph there, I will, uh, on the root, Memchete, to wipe out or to erase. Breshit Gimel, Pasuk Eser, Genesis 3, 10. Vayomer et kolcha shamati bagan, vaira ki erom anochi, veechave. Yeshayahu yud dalad. Psukim shalosh esrei va'arba esrei. Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. Va'ata amarta b'levavecha shamayim e'ele mima'al l'chokhave el arim kis'i ve'eshev bahar mo'ed b'yarkete tzafon e'ele al b'mate av edame le'elyon. Previously, we talked about in the uh, lesson about the Vav that there's a peculiar thing in Biblical Hebrew which is called the reversing Vav or the conversant Vav which takes um, the tense of the verb and it reverses the tense. And so we're going to see that in this translation here in Genesis where uh, Adam has been hiding in the garden. And uh, when we look at the verb, the first verb there we see with the aleph is ira. So that aleph is I will, and the, uh, the root there, yudrish, ah, aleph, is to means to be afraid. But the vav before it changes it from I will be afraid, and it's always translated as I was afraid. And also in the second example, the aleph there is attached to the verb chave which is chet bet aleph, which means to hide. And so it looks like, and I will hide, but remember that vav changes it to, and so I hid in the past tense. In the second example on this uh, slide, we have the five I wills uh, from Hasatan in Isaiah. He says, e'ele, I will go up. Arim, I will raise up. And now here's an example where it's not translated in the, re in the reverse tense, 
because all the things are the things that he's going to do. So even though it says ve'eshev, it's not and I sat, it's not translated and I sat, but it is translated and I will sit. Ve'eleh, again, I will go up and edame, I will be like. Since this is the only use that we have for the Aleph, uh, we're going to take a little rabbi trail and explore something else. We're going to explore the Aleph as a suffix in Aramaic. And as you probably know, there are parts of the um, Tanakh that are written in Aramaic, particularly in Daniel. So here are two verses from there. Please very much excuse my non-ability to read Aramaic. Daniel Gimel Pasukarishon, Daniel 3.1 Benevuchadnetzar Malka avad slem di dehav rume amin shitin teye amin shit akime bevikat dura bemedinat bavel Daniel Gimel pasuk shmona Daniel three eight Kol kavel dina be zmana karivu Guvrin Kisdain Baachalu Katsehon di Yehudeye. So I picked these examples because I think you can recognize the, the Hebrew roots. We have uh, Nebuchadnezzar and then we have the word Malka, and you can see in that Melech, the Aleph at the end means the king, and it is translated as that. Uh, in the second example, there's a root zimna. You can recognize the root zman, which means time. And so the aleph there, it's translated as the, the time or specifically that time. And the last word in the um, scripture is Yehudaye, which is the Jews. You can recognize the Yehudim there and uh, the aleph will be the Jews. Now let's see why might, that might be interesting. Breshit Aleph Pasukarishon, Genesis 1 1. Breshit para Elohim et Hashemayim ve et Haaretz. Mismor Bet Pasuk Shemesre, Psalm 2 12. Nashku var penya enough, but of du derech ki yavar kemat apo ashe kol chose vo. Mishle Lamed Aleph Pasuk Shtayim Proverbs 31.2 Ma Bri Uma Bar Bitni Ume Bar Nedarai In Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, we see the verb bara, which means to create. And uh, you can break it down according to this sort of back formation of going back into uh, bringing the Aramaic forward. Um, and, and saying in the beginning, the sun. And that's very appealing to us as believers because we know that the sun was from the beginning. This word bar, at least you're probably familiar with the term bar mitzvah. And uh, that is the Aramaic, an Aramaic term, the son of. However, we see it uh, in two other places in Tanakh. And one is in uh, Psalms. Uh, 2 verse 12 and it is translated there that phrase the phrase nashku bar uh, it's translated in a uh, Christian Bibles or King James whatever as kiss the Sun for us to say that the word bar appears um, in the Psalms to have the same meaning as an Aramaic meaning which was many many years later um, it's a bit of an anomaly. However, even in Proverbs, it also appears um, that, uh, and it's very clear that it means son, because the woman is talking to her son, who's the king, who's writing the proverb, and, and she calls him the bar, the son of my belly, and also the son of my vows. There's no way that it can mean the other meanings that bar has in Hebrew in Tanakh, which would be either 
Um, but sometimes it means corn or grain, and sometimes it means a, a kind of a purity. And so, when if you get a Bible that's translated by Jews into English, it will not say "kiss the sun" in uh, Psalms 2:12. That's a abhorrent idea to them. They don't understand that Messiah will be uh, have an incarnation, um, or that he can be the Son of God, and that that's their understanding. So when you, they see the translation there. Um, they translate it as worship and purity. Well, now we have another problem. Even though the bar legitimately can mean purity, they're taking this word, nashak, which almost always means kiss, and interpreting it as to worship. Um, so the, there are a few cases where nashak means um, to be armed or be to, uh, equipped. But even so, dragging that over to worship, I don't know. So it's a bit of an anomaly, some of the things that we in, uh, encounter when we're looking into different things in Tanakh. I will tell you that in the Septuagint, both of these verses, the Psalms and Proverbs verse, they're both translated as, um, the word bar is translated as a, a small boy or a child. So that's it. The Aleph in Hebrew is a suffix. It means I will do something and I will come back and we'll do another letter next time. In the meantime, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.